Do you really like Packard Pokesat and want to promote the show? Then go to cafepress.com slash Packard Pokesat. There are hundreds of items available, including hats, shirts, hoodies, and so much more. Every purchase from cafepress.com slash Packard Pokesat helps support the show. Your Packard Pokesat coffee mug is waiting for you. Do you want to stream Packard Pokesat on your iPhone or BlackBerry? Download Stitcher free today at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're on in three, two, one. This is Packard Pokesat, and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokesat. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining us tonight from the far east coast is Crystal Says So, welcoming her back. After her long hiatus. Yes, I was on sabbatical, people. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic 9. I made room under my tree for a pony. You think the sun <laughs> will bring me one? <laughs> no, but That's you a- might get a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> or poop. <laughs> well, if you have the horse, you're definitely going to get poop. I can say lots of poop. Unless you're Pe- Peter Griffin, who keeps the pony in the closet, and he goes, "Oh, oh yeah, ponies that was like awful. To, pe- ponies <laughs> like to eat, need to like eat and stuff, don't they?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're a mean one, Mister Packard Packard. Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm wearing the Santa hat. See? <laughs> All right. Well, we have a nice show for this evening. So let's get to our first topic for this evening. Building a better future. Science and technology. Science. Yes, since it is almost Giftmas. I'm not going to call it Christmas. I'm going to call it Giftmas because that's the real reason for the season. That in the Earth's tilt towards the sun or away from the sun at this at this point oh you are the grinch tonight Ooh. <laughs> i don't i'm just not wearing green that's all i should be wearing green but then i just disappear because of my background <laughs> <laughs> any anyway because it's gift miss there's a lot of things you can get your children that are sometimes they're educational sometimes it's just you know mindless crap but if you're going to get your kid something that's really useful or not shouldn't i say useful but useful as a fact of making helping them learn something it's lego and no this is not a commercial for lego because i grew up playing with lego blocks and no it's not legos it's lego okay so don't just lego my lego (laughs) (laughs) anyway there's a, a man out in romania He's 20 years old, uh, uh, Raul Oeda, I think that's his proper name. He's a Lego genius. He made a car. I don't mean just something you could fit in your hands and then, you know, race it down the road. He built a car you can sit in and it drives down the road. The only thing is, because it's made of Lego bricks and it runs not in gasoline but compressed air, it'll run about between 12 to 17 miles an hour. Which is fucking cool. The only thing that is not standard on the, the, the made of Lego bricks are the tires, uh, some of the gauges, and a few other things there. It took 20 months to complete, more than 500,000 pieces, and uh, and just a few pieces, you know, to basic construction so it holds together so it doesn't fall to the ground. The engine contains four orbital engines contain, containing 256 pistons. That is it's awesome. There's also a video of him driving this thing down the road. You can hear it, the compressed air escaping and, and the little gears going. It's really fucking awesome. There'll be a link at PackerPokesIt.wordpress.com. You can watch the video there uh, at the end of the show. Uh, jo- uh, Crystal, your thoughts? He just about called me Joe, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Bad Packard. Bad, 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 bad Packard. Oh, my goodness. This was really fascinating. I tell you, as much as I hate stepping on those damn little bricks, uh-huh. I sure do enjoy putting them together. And I still do. To see this kid to be so young, to come up with a concept like this, um, and actually for it to come to fruition in, what did it say, like 20 months? Mm-hmm. 20 before months. It, you know, yeah. From the time they planned it to us completed. Gosh, Everybody should have hopped on this bandwagon. 
he's in Australia now. Okay. And managed to get 40 Australians to each pay $500 a piece to fund this. Mm. Then the three CEOs from these large car corporations, they all hop on their private jets. They fly down to see what this kid's all about because, hey, we don't know what's in the future. And if this kid right. can do this now, what's he going to be able to do for us 10 years down the road? Oh, yeah. So he's an actual genius. And to think that these people kind of met up on the Internet, this this. This started with a single tweet, a single idea, and they followed the progress of the making of this car through Skype. Yes. Amazing. And I thought that was that was just excellent. He's just missing the fuzzy dice on the rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and a rear view mirror. <laughs> Don't fact, blame a tote packard. In fact, he's even made pictures on the on the tire, you know, like instead of a place for a hubcap, he's actually has a picture of his, his face. Personalized, yeah, his personalized hubcaps. Is that what that was? Yeah, it's a yeah. personalized hubcap. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's fucking awesome. That's he's, the way of the you, future. You know, you think about it, your kids. I mean, even your little girls or your little boys, either one. Usually, that's like one of the first things they try to put together is mm -hmm. some kind of vehicle. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, you know, so I mean, oh, yeah. this is just awesome, and it really is. It really is worth. Y'all go watch the video; it's really great. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Connie, your thoughts? I I love Legos because they're stealth learning. You know, every kid who puts together Legos and then they don't interlock the blocks and it falls falls apart. They mm. learn about structural integrity, right? And all of this. It's they're wonderful. They are sometimes a little high priced for all of us, you mm. know, but. They're wonderful toys. Those, um, those kits are not cheap. I mean, oh no, the, they're the, not. Just, just uh, some of these little ones are like, you know, just like they're like, there's like ten pieces in there. You, you can make whatever. Yes. And those are about five bucks just for ten pieces. But you know what gets me about Legos is they are so worth it. There are other sets out there. I'm not going to name names, but they don't lock the way that Legos lock. I, oh they, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The mega bricks yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. And the ones that they make, they make a leg, a mega brick like one, but it's made of wood right. also. So. You know, I was curious too because this was such a great project. I so I'm looking this up, um, and I was curious. Well, what is the largest Lego model ever made? And mm -hmm. it was actually something that was uh, finished in May of this last year. Mm -hmm. An X-wing fighter. Oh yeah, I've with seen an that. R2D2 unit, and it's actually a little bit bigger than a, what a real quote unquote X-wing would be because a real X-wing is like 41 feet, mm -hmm. and this was. Two tons, 5.3 million Legos, and it was 44 feet long. Yep. Um, I, my husband used to work with a man who was, collected marbles. His son worked with Legos, and he was actually hired by Lego to be a master builder. Uh. They, they, you know, to build those big things you find like at the... You know, when you walk in a store and you see this big Lego model, they design these things. That could have been it's, me, man. That could have been me. <laughs> it's, it's it's so exciting because I I love I love the way Legos ignite imagination in all kids, and um, I just I just think that I I wish that girls played with them more. I think that they're trying to gear it more towards yeah, girls but with now the, too. With, the, with the 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 ones that they have geared. For the girls, I mean, they're all flowery and things like that, and it just like they don't, give, they don't yes. give them really cool stuff to build. No, you know, no, and they don't. And they just feel you know, like, oh, you got a little house, and you got to water the plants. And like, fuck that, <laughs> give them a real project to build. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, but you know, I think sometimes we do that to our own kids. I mean, I think I geared my son toward the building things and my daughter towards the dog. Yes. I, mean, I think I did that myself. Yeah, no, the, no, you're right. You that's do. that's very cult. It's 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 ingrained in our culture. We end up pushing. Uh, it's a gender specific. Like the, you think that the girls have to do this and the boys have to do this. The boys have to right. do manly, buildy stuff. Girls have to do the caring type things. You know, take care of the plants, take care of the house. You know, <laughs> that's why they have toys that are made of. You know, they have. It uh, looks like a a stove or a uh, vacuuming oh, or whatever. Yes. And th those are just bad toys. Get them a real Lego kit. Give them, give them a Death Star. Those are they're about four hundred dollars, <laughs> but give them a Death Star. Watch them build that thing. A Death Star. A Death really Star. Give them a little Death Star. The Death Star is it's about it's about uh, for, about for a mini four, Hitler. Yeah, yeah. The next Hitler out there. No, no, no. I don't. No, I don't mean like a, the one they're going to put <laughs> okay. on the space. That's that that would create. I, I think a Lego Sorry. set would of that would probably be about yes. a two. 
five billion trillion. I don't know whatever fucking thing is. <laughs> well, no, no, but no, I mean no, the no, little the, the little Death, Death Stars. Stars. I mean about. it's just because it's it not because of it's a Death Star only because it's no, more I complicated. Get it. I get yeah. It. Death so compl- stars are what you see when you walk across those suckers at two o'clock in the morning uh-huh. at the night. <laughs> Them and micro machines. Oh, yeah. my oh, oh yeah. Oh my god, that hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah, because the first because you step on those things, the next place they are, they are in orbit because you're picking them up and throwing them <laughs> to the moon. To the moon. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> No, but my daughters would play with Lego bricks when they were little kids all the time. I wanted them very badly. My parents didn't buy them for me. Oh, uh, that's yeah, bad. They, they played my old them. stuff. They played with all my old stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, they, they loved it. They tore all, it's like, oh, here, this is like, oh, that's great. Rip, tore all apart. Like, I don't want to build something completely different. <laughs> 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 stuff I put together very carefully and never touched again for 10, 20 years. And like, oh, okay, rip. <laughs> Where's the piece? for this i don't know it's all gone but that's the purpose of toys isn't it to yeah. build it again yeah. i know you are <laughs> oh well anyway speaking of uh <laughs> speaking of i have no idea i am i'm, I'm totally lost right now but <laughs> you have you tried Hare krishna <laughs> yeah well i don't know I'm, I'm just having one of those dates it's been a long day for me but anyway let's get on to our uh, next topic for this evening well, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. When it comes to technology, and I know this is not the technology section, there are things you don't do. You don't say certain things on Twitter because you will get a, sometimes people get arrested for doing stuff on Twitter. But then there's the, also the people out there who go to school to learn technology, whatever, and then they just do something completely stupid. This guy. He's 20 years old, it's, and he's a Harvard student named Eldo Kim. Now, he was at Harvard, right? Okay. He went. He didn't want to take a test that was coming up. So what did he do? He sent out an email to the teachers, the school faculty, whatever, saying, there's a bomb. There's a bomb in this building, and it's going to go off at this time and that and whatever, and it's near this location. You know, it didn't get real specific. You know, just, hopefully just to get out. People would, you know have to vacate the building so they give him time to you know catch up on his testing or whatever the fuck it is his plan was it was a hoax it was not real however the fucker did something so stupid he did it from his dorm room now he he tried to cover his tracks by sending it out through a tor router now for those of you who don't know what a tor router is it's real simple it goes to a hub which supposedly mixes out to the IP address, goes to another Tor router, which is in some other country sometimes, and it will look like the IP where it's coming from is like, say, Russia, China, Australia. Make it look like wherever you're at. If you have a Tor router set up in your house you and you go to Google, and if you do it just right, it'll Google will think, hey, your location is Russia. Your location is China because your browser has all this information in it on location, your IP, your incoming IP, and all this other good stuff. And what type of browser you're using, for example. Now, because like I said, this guy's an idiot, and he did it from his dorm room. The thing is, see, my, my oldest daughter is in college. And when you want to use their, their systems, you have to log in. And so, therefore, you're identified from your login. Now, they bounce the Tor router all the way back to his dorm area, and then out of 10 people, they were able to, to whittle it down to one. What an idiot. Crystal, your thoughts? Well, I, I think I had a... As a parent, this really pissed me off because I'm so tired of seeing these innocent kids trying to get education, trying to do what's right, and getting shot up, blown up, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you know, as a parent, it would make me very mad to think that that was happening. I could not get to my child or whatever. I, I tried to take some sort of sympathy out uh, on this young man. Obviously, he probably has money. Mm-hmm. He well, probably going to Harvard, he's got a, money. Well, either that or he's very, very smart. Well, smart in some ways, not in this way, but maybe in some others to be able to get an education to Harvard is quite hard. Um, we don't know what kind of 
you know, uh, pressure he's facing. I'm, I'm hoping something in him just snapped, and it was just a really dumb thing by a really young kid. And, and I'm trying to look at it that way. He actually sent the thing to the campus police and mentioned the specific halls, which were the ones that he was scheduled to take exams in. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why he thought he would get away with this. And maybe this was really some kind of, of attention call. Yeah, maybe maybe he really needs some help. So I, I really did. I tried to look at this from t- two different angles, even though it was really a dumbass thing to do. I hope that um, I hope he gets the help he needs. Yeah. Well, it's he said that he was he was afraid to take this test. Now, he the Alan Dershowitz uh, of the Felix uh, Frankfurt professor of law at Harvard told NBC News that it's very hard to fail an exam at Harvard. That doesn't give me much confidence in Harvard now all of a sudden because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is supposed to be hard. That's why it's called Harvard, you know, you know, because we're all snooty and we really know all our stuff. And we, I've got this big law degree from Harvard. You know, if it's not that hard to fail a test at Harvard, that means, hell, I'll, I'll go to fucking Harvard just to get a, a degree, you know. Whatever, you know, it's it, it's just so funny. Kind of your thoughts. Yeah, evidently it's hard to get in, but once you're there, it's, they well, the the uh, professor made it sound like it's a skate, you yeah. know, like uh, because of grade inflation. I don't, I can't comment on that. I'm concerned. I actually am concerned for this young man. I'm like, wow, I mean, was he really that close to actually doing something or is it just a desperate cry or was he just, you know, he got too hung over because it's almost, you know, Christmas and, and he didn't, I mean, it's hard to know, but I don't know that incarceration is really the uh, thing that's going to solve this. I, I sort of want to see myself. This is my, my first thought as a parent and a concerned citizen is that maybe a psychological evaluation, psychiatric evaluation, i would be in order because according to what I read like three years ago, his dad died. I know that his mom is still in South Korea, mm-hmm. but for some reason he was here in our, he graduated from, graduated from high school uh, here in the Puget Sound somewhere. So I don't know if that meant that his dad lived here, his mom lived there. We are talking about somebody who's kind of troubled and obviously feeling stress or he's out of control and he's like cycling. Mm -hmm. You know, so either way, this is something, this is, I guess what I came away with is it's more like, what, what do we do with mental health in our country? You know, do we need that kind of intervention, I suppose. So, yeah, Uh, yeah, it's really, it was a stupid move. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cry for help one way or the other, whether he knows it or not. Yeah. You know, they were saying on here that most people, what they would do is said the there said there are precautions Kim could have taken. The, the expert said obviously because mm-hmm. he's not obviously an expert. Reporters to political distance using the internet in conflict areas like Syria are taught to boot up the Tor from a USB thumb drive or a compact disc uh, instead of their hard drive. You know, which if yeah. you're going to boot from one of these things, boot for something that you know it's not going to leave a trace. On your fucking computer. Be well, fucking... they have to register their computers when they, well, yeah, they enter yeah. the college. I'm assuming that's not just Harvard. So oh, their yeah. IP address or whatever it is with their computer is very specific. It's oh, yeah. Like... Yes, it is. Actually, it <laughs> yeah. is. It's... No, yeah. The, my daughter, she's allowed two devices on her Wi-Fi under her name. Two, unless she goes down and say, oh, please, sir. Can I have some more, sir? <laughs> <laughs> So like a phone and a, a laptop or right. what and a an combination Xbox or whatever. What yeah. is, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the yeah. NSA is listening. I just want y'all to be aware of that. <laughs> just remember. And we love you, NSA. We love you so much. Yeah. Don't say the word B I, I, O I, and B. I, 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 need, I still need a cut. Co- there's still wait. I'm still waiting for my copy of that hard drive that, I, that from last week. Never mind. Forget it. We, we, I have cookies. They're the bomb. <laughs> As, the as bomb, good, baby. They, the, those cookies are the bomb. So, anyway, no. Thank I'm, you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get on to our next topic here, if you want to get in touch with us, and we would love to have you leave us a voicemail, the phone number is right here below. And for those of you listening out on iTunes, it's 662 709 PPAP or 662 709 7727. Give us a call, leave a message. If you get a beep and then 
you start leaving a message and it starts beeping and you hear the message again. I do apologize. Like I said, we're still trying to figure out why Google's doing that to us. But just leave your message again and then we'll play your message on the show. And it, speaking of how other ways to contact us, we're going to give you the information right now. Would you like to contact us? Your host, Packard Sonic, and his very honored and crazy co host with occasional guest hosts enjoy your comments or suggestions. You can reach us 28 hours a day, eight days a week on a can on a string, smoke signals, Star Trek communicator. Those may not work, but you can contact us on Twitter as Packard Pokes at and by email at Packard Pokes at at gmail.com. You can also listen and join in the conversation live Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on fawnlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at. You can find past shows on iTunes, YouTube, Mixler Radio, and Stitcher Radio. Help us out by rating, commenting, subscribing, retweeting, and reposting the show wherever you can. Click the like button on Facebook slash Packard Pokes at to join in the conversation. Would you like to help keep the show running and pick up some awesome Packard Pokes at merchandise? Visit cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at today and buy hats, shirts, or one of over 300 other items that are also available. Visit PackardPokesAt.wordpress.com for links to the news articles covered tonight and more information on this or other episodes. We hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for listening and your support. And thank you, Joe, even though you're not here. He, he, he hits those marks every time. I don't know how he does it. Uh, so 662, <laughs> is that the second, the cousin second removed from the beast? Or yes, it's it? the second cousin twice removed from the beast. <laughs> okay. it's, a, it's, it's his little neighbor, you know, kid down the block. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Hell has a view of the beach from there, I guess. Yeah, he has, he yeah. has a better view of the beach, you know. But oh, okay. it, it's all full of weeds. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> weed? Oh, I'm sorry. Cole. No, yeah, the weed. Uh, weed. Anyway. <laughs> Probably that too, Crystal. Could be a little bit of that too. Uh-huh. All I right. did not put any weed in my pumpkin bread. No. A little something, something. That's what's coming up next. <laughs> anyway, let's get going to our next topic for this evening. There's a guy out there, and his name is Tim Wildman. I guys, know, something like that. Yeah, Tim Wildman. He's another one of these nut jobs on the ch- same station that Brian Fisher is on. I think they broadcast from, uh, I don't know, Family Unvalues or whatever the fuck the place is called. But these guys are not only fucking ass liars, they, they make shit up all the time. And since this is the holiday gift miss season... They think there's a war on Christmas. They come up with the stupidest things to talk about on this show. Now, we're going to play a clip here, and we're giving the timer off tonight. So we'll, we'll show you that clip right now. This is not a phony war. And I, I'll admit, right. I mean, Tim, what's happening in our country doesn't equate with the seriousness of people being martyred for their faith in third world countries. But make no mistake about it, it's all part of the same war. And we better keep well, pushing back instead of surrendering. Absolutely. And, 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 and Ray, uh, part of uh, the, the road to uh, more serious persecution, and I totally agree with what uh, Pastor's saying here about, you know, we're not, and nobody's arguing that, that we, that we American Christians suffer like so many of our brothers and sisters do around the world in terms of physical persecution. But let me tell you something. The pathway or the road to uh, more serious persecution comes when you start marginalizing people and marginalizing their faith, and that's what that's what some of these secularists are attempting to do with the Christian faith in America. The video comes from Right Wing Watch. Thank you, Right Wing Watch, for cutting this. Now, there's some major issue with this this people here. First off, they said they're martyrs. Okay, I was involved in the church, and most people when they were they wanted to be uh, martyrs. They, you know, there's like, oh, I, you know, if someone happens to me, I hope it's a, in a martyr version or version death. You know, this way, that way I can be glorified. They glorify their fucking martyrs. You know, what, what are, what about St. Uh, Paul, you know, he, or, or John the Baptist, he was a martyr. He got his head cut off, but you know, hey, you know, leave all the gory stuff off. But he was a Christian model because he was a martyr. 
And secondly, the in the Christianity they're talking about in other countries, this war on Christmas, that's a fucking red herring because this is they're talking about stuff that's happening here. What the fuck does that have to do with anything that's going on in any other countries? Fuck that. And uh, physical prosec- persecution? Physical persecution? Really? Yeah, I see reports all the time of Christians being drugged down the street, being drugged by chains because of their belief in God. That happens every day. You're a fucking liar, Tim Wildman. You're a fucking liar. There are more people out there that are pulled behind by chains on behind trucks and things like that because they're gay or they don't believe in your flavor of belief. And marginalizing people, you mean like in the same way you marginalize gay people or anybody else that doesn't believe in your your particular brand of religion? It just pisses me off that these people sit there and they tell these fucking bold-faced lies. You know, if they're God real, I wish they would, it would come down and beat them over the, the head with, into a bloody stump with the ninth commandment, Ugh, which they beat constantly. Crystal, your thoughts? Oh, well, well, well. I was not familiar with Tilde Wild, uh, with Tim Wildman, actually. I, I just uh, did a little bit of brief research, and apparently they keep this all in the family because his dad was before him and handed the reins over in uh, early, I think, 2000 uh, over to him. President of the American Family Association, American Family Radio, yeah, that's big it. pro family advocacy group, blah, 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 blah. Basically, if I see anything in this, is it's they're their own hate group. Yes. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think with Tim, his big deal mostly is with the Jews. <laughs> uh, and the well, yeah, I've just, heard I've heard these people say the Jews are actually a fake religion. There, it's a defunct religion. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> already. Thank you. You know, I, I, it is a a non a non profit organization, and <laughs> they also are behind. They created. Not only are they behind it, they created the one million moms and one million dads groups. Which, if you <laughs> are familiar you. with them. They are pretty yep. much hateful to everyone. Yeah. Um. If if you marginalize, you're marginalizing yourself. Yep. And I, I this um, the more I read about this, the sicker I got. Yep. Literally, this is not what I think a typical Christian exemplifies. And no, we are not persecuted to the degree that you see Christians persecuted overseas. Right. You're not the way that a gay person is here oh, or yeah. a person of color is here. Yep. And for you to put yourself in that same category makes you one big douchebag, Tim Wildman. Yeah. I'm sorry. And, and don't forget the way they persecute atheists. They're going after atheists because we just don't believe. that. And that's the only crime that we've committed in their eyes is we just don't believe their shit. You know, ironically, Packer, just the research that I've done on them, though, they kind of shy away from the atheistic stuff more than they like to to jump on the hate groups. Uh, I I mean, in any other group. Hmm. But it it seems that they're a bit intimidated by you guys. (laughs) I wonder why. I wonder why. Hmm. it, it, It seems like that they do pick on the weaker people, and the atheists come back, and they go, well, you oh, see shit. Brian Fisher. You see Brian Fisher going after atheists all the time. So I don't know. I now, see, he I was I was familiar with him, mm-hmm. but not so much Wildman. I had never heard no. of him before. Mm-mm. He's a journalist. He has a degree in journalism. He's married. He's got three kids. He seems, but yet he he leads these tours to the Holy Land, and he, yeah. you know, and I'm sure he's a very well educated man. Yeah, but um. No, yeah, this made me sick. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 it made me. This guy just made me angry. I mean, the, the, the lies. I there's one thing I can't stand is people fucking lying. It just, it just, it just gets me to the core. I mean, you can do anything else, you know, but lying right there. It just, it just pisses me off to no end. Kind of your thoughts. Well, uh, one of the things I read. It, was which seemed to sum it up is marginalization is not persecution right and i you know if if uh, religion finds itself being marginalized being shoved aside it's because we are understanding more and um we aren't relegating everything to a realm of superstition which may or may not have anything to do with god but it has everything to do with religion right and uh what got me about the afa is how much they turn uh Christ, you know, kids who are in church and parents into their bulldogs. Uh, they um, they're supposed to be a nonprofit 
organization, but they urge parents to, for example, there was the Mix It Up Day, which they promoted, they, they warned uh, parents and said, this is a gay advancing a uh, promo mm. and so they said you need to protest to the schools that you know because there's these schools that say they're going to have this day and so they turn their parent the parents into the bulldogs or they oh, uh they get bibles in the hand of students by having this this push over the summer through a man named tim todd it's called um uh, youth for truth and and they say okay we'll give you this bible if you'll promise to give it to an un uh church you know a non-saved teenager and so they subvert they subvert the whole you know separation of church and state by making the kids their proselytizers and and that's i'm just like yeah see to me i'm like oh no you're 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 trying to skirt the system and it because it's student on student proselytization then it's okay and uh that's where this money is going and i i wasn't able to source but like um i I don't think that i don't think that should be allowed in school I just well, don't. It shouldn't be. I mean, even yeah. student on student. It, it well, they say be. that's supposed to be in your free time, but no, that's you know what at lunch at school. You know, they're no. I so to me, I just I, I was I was I was obs- I was obsessed with trying to figure out where this came from, and and actually, why uh, there's another brother who is the, actually their ad man uh-huh. for this for this organization, and I. I ran out of time today to source that out, but it wasn't just this one guy. What's his name again? Um, not Tim, or is it Tim? Uh, Tim Wildman, and he has a brother that actually you know, works for this AFA, mm-hmm. and he's their ad agency guy, and he's actually gotten awards for his ads. So, no, it's it's really smart, and I think that they, you know, again, it you followed. I think if you followed the money, you'd probably find out that this whole thing is just a joke and yeah. it's well not a joke but it's it's a it's a sick joke yeah but oh, um absolutely. yeah no anyway yeah this, um, this, this. They, and they hate homeless and actually the thing i found you said something about i don't know what you said about i everything that i found had to do with homosexuality oh that's yeah. that's the real thing that they are ob- are objecting to yeah so they, they inflame anything. people to to go after yeah. gay people but just because they don't the opposite gender they like the same gender and there's nothing right. wrong with that so Hey, let's drag him out. Let's tie him to a chain and drag him behind a truck a few hundred yards or a few miles. Just let's just teach the gay, you know, to be well, not gay by killing him yeah. like that. Yeah, that's no. These people are. It just they don't realize the harm that they do. They really don't. They when they they spout off this kind of shit and then they sit there and go, "We're being so persecuted because you're not telling. They're not allowing us to say Merry Christmas." Wah! Well, even just go to the AFA website, and you'll see all the things that they bo- boycott, all the things that they promote. I, I ran out. I, mean, I just feel like I'm out of time. And this is, you know, because there's a lot there that they are behind, and they actually promote it. And so, people should really look at this. It's, yeah. yeah, if you get a chance to, yeah, go ahead and take a look at the at their site. But you know, you might need yep. a shower afterwards. <laughs> well, I gotta say, I, I hate saying virus. that because it gives them traffic. But you yeah. know, there wasn't. A, I don't know if there was a place to leave negative comments. I didn't see that. So yeah, and, and use a good virus protection when you go there because these, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Shower I'm, afterwards, yeah. Shower, shower afterwards, <laughs> and use a good virus protection because yes. a lot of these sites, uh, religious sites, because they think God is protecting their sites. People put malicious software on their servers. You know, the hack into the server, put a little ad, I'll put a little really? bomb in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll put a little logic bomb or some shit in there, and it gets in your computer. You're done. You're toast. So make sure you clean your system after you visit the site. I am dead. No, I am absolutely serious. Okay. I, 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 well, you, it's ter- I mean, that's terrible because everything, just like you have both said, mm-hmm. they hate everyone. Yeah. They yes. hate every group. They hate every gender. They hate they hate everyone. They do the very things that they're supposed to be teaching not to do. Right. And so for somebody to go through, I, I mean, as a believer, I was shocked. I think he would be even more so. I mean, it was be like, oh, yeah, well, this is typical. Uh, it, that is not typical Christian behavior. And and you guys. Well, I don't know, know about that. that. I've seen a few these, Christian states no, like these, that, too. These <laughs> folks are full of just Shit? venom. 
Ven- full of shit, no. but full of venom. They're oh, yeah. hateful. They're, They're very mean. hateful. Yes, they are very They're hateful. They're vile. They are very they hateful. take the word family out of their name. Absolutely. I, oh, yes. They, when I found yeah. out they were behind all that, and the, the family, the family, the family, and the 17-something billion dollars that they get. Yep. And tax you know, and, free. Oh, and you know what the thing is? What's really yeah. pissed? You know what really pisses me off about the the American Family Association? They've got the, the they the their broadcast boards all over the place. I mean, I can't swing a dead mm-hmm. anything. And I see these. Oh, you you got children. They're like texting, or you got a little boy pulling a, back a slingshot. And you know these people shouldn't be doing that. So. We we got a, you're frustrated with your children. Go to the American Family Association radio station and hear the word of gob. You know it's it's fucking bullshit. Anyway, speaking of uh, bullshit, that's not bullshit. <laughs> 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 We're gonna actually get a, get on to our uh, next topic here. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. And on tonight's Did You Know They're an Atheist? Tonight we're covering Brad Pitt. Yes, that guy, Brad Pitt. You know, I somebody once, I was talking to this person on Twitter a while back. Do and, we have to cover him? <laughs> well, you can. I don't know. High five. You want to you uncover him? I know you want to cover him. <laughs> and anyway, they they were comparing Brad Pitt to somebody else, and it's like, well, what's this? What has he got that he does? Like, well, Brad Pitt doesn't believe in deities. He he's an atheist. You know, he doesn't believe in sky fairies. Now he said in a July twenty third, two thousand nine, New York Daily News and some other news sources reported that Brad Pitt told a German magazine called the Bild B I L D that when they we asked him, do you believe in God? And he said, he's smiling. He goes, no, no, no. Uh, is it your soul spiritual? He goes, uh, no, no, no. I'm probably 20% atheist and 80% agnostic. I don't think anyone really knows. You'll find out or not when you get there. Until then, there's no point thinking about it. I think that's fair. I really think that's fair to the fact that, you know, most people who are atheists like myself, you know, I don't know. And there's people out there who are agnostic and they think that they have to know that there's no God before they can be an atheist. No, you don't. Let's get that straight, people. You just don't have to believe in one. You don't have it's to an- prove it's not there. You just yeah. don't have to believe in it. You don't, do, you, do you have to prove that there's a Bigfoot before you don't believe in it? Do you have to prove that there's no Tooth Fairy before you don't believe in it? No, you don't. You don't have to prove any of that stuff. So just some thoughts there. Crystal, your thoughts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll leave it for Connie uh, because, like, Brad Pitt's not my cup of tea personally. But what I do like about him, well, he just turned 50, so we need to Happy give him a little birthday, birthday shout out there. Um, I like his humanitarianistic things that he and Angelina do, they, they, they do together as a couple. Millions and millions and millions to many things, regardless of a gender or sexual orientation or anything else they give to good things the one thing i really do adore about the both of them though is even if they do not believe or agnostic or believers one way or the other you're not going to hear them putting another group down right exactly period it's not going to be them damn christians them damn atheists it, it, they're just as cool they state what they believe and they yeah. like they leave it at that. Yeah. You know, he's known for many things, producer, actor, but I like the human stuff that he does. I like that human touch that he and Angelina have and they're a hot couple. Mm-hmm. And they're just hot. <laughs> Does anything else matter? Um, the one thing, I, the, the, other, the other thing I do like about them, you know, in 2010, they really did get behind Doctors Without Borders, um, you know, yeah. to help the Haiti uh, earthquake victims, and they were very involved in that. So, of course, I thought that was cool. And um, you know, big on uh, same-sex marriage, said that they wouldn't yes. get married until everyone was able to marry the one they loved. Yeah. So, that's that's super cool. Absolutely, Bravo. absolutely. Connie, your thoughts. Actually, it was. It's only been in the last, you know, how many years that I've really been a fan of uh, Brad Pitt, and it's been his move towards humanitarianism and all of that. I mean, I found that really 
interesting and uh one of our actually my husband and I one of our favorite movies is Mr. and Mrs. Smith we have a lot of in jokes about that I think I love um that they said that they won't marry until everybody can marry right. and I love his null hypothesis basically about uh faith and God and and that's I think that's the most true position to really be in and I think that that you know but Railing against religion is a different thing. Yeah. You know, re- organized religion or organized religions that claim to know all the truth. That's where I find his choices interesting. I think, you know, you look at, I was reading his biography on IMDb, and it's funny how, as a young man, you know, he's like all young people. He's kind of brash and everything. Mm-hmm. And how his life has changed as he's matured, and he wanted, you know, to have kids and to ha- do more than just wake up in the morning and make movies and i think yeah. that's that's extremely admirable as you watch this journey that he's obviously taken both spiritually and mentally uh so that's that's a really uh, again just admirable i i guess i'm repeating myself now so yeah yeah um uh, yeah anyway uh, i thought one of the funnier things i found though you know he's a method actor and he on Quentin Tarantino, he said, the set is heaven, and he is God. Heretics are not allowed. He made uh, Inglorious Bastards with mm-hmm. um, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, so I guess that's as close as you can to actually talking about oh, yeah. <laughs> some kind of God <laughs> being an absolute square. And Quentin Tarantino, I guess he's the Spaghetti Monsters uh, earthly <laughs> visage or something. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> happy birthday, Brad Pitt. Right. And, you, and if you need us to come wife. and like, give you a dance, we'll be glad to do that for you. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, now, we actually have a, a quick mention. Now, we, I, the, he's not an atheist. He was an agnostic, his, and that's Carl Sagan. He passed away on this exact day and date, December twentieth, 1997. Now, like I said, he was not an atheist, and he even says that he wasn't an atheist. He, he said he was an agnostic, and that's why, the reason why I brought up the agnosticism about being uh, of knowledge and everything like that. But in the early 80s, it was very difficult for atheists to come out then anyway. But there are a lot of quotes from him that make him sound like he was more leaning to the atheistic, like he's like hinting at it. It's like he was wanted to say, yes, I'm an atheist, but don't tell anybody. But go look it up. He's on. You'll, you'll find him on the Celebrity Wiki at celebrityatheist.com on the wiki on uh, Carl Sagan. So we salute Carl Sagan for all he contributed to the to the science community out there. And he, stardust. Yes, he was. He was a he was a giant among men, and I intellectually speaking, he was one of those giants. Anyway, all right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. And uh, as we had a few new faces in the chat room, and I, a few people kind of popped in late. And since this is going to be our short show, we will be back next week uh, with our whether regular, you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, we will be back next week <laughs> to round out the year. So, and we will ha- and we'll have a special guest on next week as well. So don't be late. Nine o'clock here. Also, real quick, uh, for those of you out there who listen to the show and download the show on iTunes, they're apparently having some kind of difficulty. So the next week, I, I don't know if uh, my the show will be uploaded to iTunes, but it will still be a lot available at PackerPokes at WordPress dot com. So you can download the show and listen to it from there. But as far as iTunes, I really don't know. Maybe it'll go up. Maybe it won't. So it, it, at this point, it's fifty fifty. So just give it a shot. If you don't see it, if you're listen, trying to listen to this on iTunes a week later. You you'll find out why <laughs> that that wasn't my fault. Something with Apple went on there. So, anyway, again, thanks for coming. This has been Pack of Pokes that we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap. <laughs>